Hello everyone, it's Scott here, and welcome to this video on um, setting up some level objects, setting up some uh, just some objects that we can use in a scene, okay? Again, this is just to get you introduced to, uh, to Unity. So what we're going to do is we're going to just place some very simple objects into our game level. Hopefully you've had a wee bit of time to practice the viewport navigation, as it's something we'll be using a lot. If you've forgotten, it's Alt and Left Mouse Button to rotate, Middle Mouse Button to pan, and Alt and Right Mouse Button to zoom in and out. You can also hold down the Right Mouse Button to look around, and using the WASD keys will also move your character as if this was a first person shooting game. So, to add in some objects, we're going to go up to the very top to Game Object, and we're going to create Other, and we have a whole list of items we can choose from. Things like Particle Systems, which is like smoke and fire. Um, we can add in additional cameras, although we've already got one. We can add in lights to our scene, and then we can add in primitive objects. And what primitive objects are, it's literally a cube, a sphere, a cylinder, so on and so forth. So we're going to add what's called a plane. And what a plane is, it's just a single-sided uh, surface. So we're going to add a plane in, and you'll notice we have this little plane. I also forgot to mention that your mouse wheel also zooms you in and out. Okay, so this is a plane. It, this is mainly used for kind of floors or walls. I'm just going to rotate around. It is one-sided, so if you look underneath it, it actually disappears. This is going to act as our floor in our scene. Okay. Now, like I said in the previous video, we have what's called the inspector panel. And what the inspector panel is, <coughs> excuse me, um, it's essentially the, the list of uh, parameters or properties of that object. So, in the first one is something called transform and what transform is in unity it's the position the rotation and scale of an object so the position is literally where it is in 3d space and it's defined by three axes x axis which is uh, left and right y which is uh, up and down and z is the third dimension okay or sorry y would be up and z would be the third dimension um, some 3D applications uh, use a different scheme, but in Unity we have X and Z for the the, the left, right, up, down, and then you have Y, which is your your kind of your um, your up in the world. It's you'll get used to the kind of the, the thought of it. And at the moment, it's defined by three values, like I said, X, Y, and Z, and these are set to one set to minus uh, 0 0.7, one and minus nine, and this is basically the position of it on this grid. So to move this, you'll notice that we have this uh, three arrows. And um, this is the, the gizmo. And what the gizmo is, it's a little tool to help you move objects. So if you click and drag on any arrow, you can move it in one direction, which is very handy. Not the one direction band, but you know what I mean. Awful joke. Um, so you can move this around and notice that whenever we move this around, the, the values actually change up in the top right. So what I'm going to do is I want to center this guy off. So I'm just going to click on 0, 0, and 0. And this is just going to 0 the whole thing. So my plane is now in the center of the game world. Then we have the scale. We can actually change the scale of it. So I'm going to set this to maybe 5 by 5 by 5. Notice that the Y value didn't actually do anything because it's a one-sided object. And that's now made our plane a wee bit bigger. And to rotate as well, you can type in rotational values such as 30 degrees, and then it'll tilt the object. Another way to access this position rotation scale is by using these little gizmos up here. So here we've got the pan tool, which lets you pan the camera. If you hold down alt, it'll give you uh, different options. But mainly right beside it is a arrow button. And this arrow will change this to move mode, where you can manually move your object. The one beside it is rotate, so you can rotate the object, and you just use the little colors to define what direction you want them to move. And if you click somewhere in the middle, it will move it in all directions. I'm using Control Z just to go back, and then this one here, the kind of arrows kind of expanding, is the scale option. So you can actually scale this object. You can also do it in different um, different kind of um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for. Um, you can do it non-proportionally, so if you want it to be wide but not taller, you can do this kind of thing using one axis, but I typically just use the middle axis here. Okay, I'm going to change this back to 5 by 5 by 5 
So that's a wee bit on bringing objects in and kind of um, moving them around and so on. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add a cube. I'm going to go to game object, create other and cube. And we've got a little tiny cube here. It's very hard to see. So what we're going to do is we're going to move back to move mode. I'm just going to move this up, this little guy here. Now, he's very kind of out of the way. So we're going to press the F key, F for frame, and that will frame this object into view. It kind of just zooms it in. And I'm going to use the arrows to just place them on the floor, like so. And we've got some properties for this as well. We can change the scale if we want. We can make them really big, 20 by 20 by 20. Of course, then he'll be nearly as big as the floor. For now, I'm just going to pick 2 by 2 by 2. Press F to view, and then move that down. And I'm going to put his position in 0, 0, and I'm just going to try move this. Another wee hotkey for you guys, and it's a really handy tool, is there's something called vertex snapping um, in Unity. And what vertex snapping lets you do is it lets you take a vertex, which is a point of a model, okay, so the points of a model, and you can snap it to another vertex on another model. So to do this, we hold down the V key, we have our cube selected, and notice that it's snapping to all the little points of this object. We're just going to click on one, and it'll automatically, if you move it around, it'll snap to the, the vertices of, a, of the, the plane. And why have we done this? It just means that now our cube is perfectly positioned on the bottom of the plane. So why did this not work when we typed in 0 into Y? If we type 0 in, he kind of goes halfway through. It's very annoying, isn't it? That's because in Unity, the default uh, primitive objects, their point, their center point, is actually in the center of the object. This is known as a pivot point, or the origin point. Um, whenever we're traditionally modeling in 3D, we tend to make our pivot point on the bottom of the model, so that whenever we bring it into a game engine, it will snap to the floor, but not in all cases, okay? So we just use the vertex snap to do this. It's a really, really handy tool. Okay, so we've looked at making some primitive objects, such as the plane and the cube. Let's now look at how to make some lights. Lights are used to light up your scene, essentially. It's like flicking on a light switch. If we were to play this, um, it should be pitch black, although by default it's not. So to add in a light, we go to Game Object, Create Other. And we're going to choose um, one of four lights. What you have is the directional light, which acts as sunlight. Uh, directional lights, like the sun, cannot be moved, but they can be rotated. Point lights are like uh, omnidirectional lights. They're like uh, a simple light bulb in your in your room. These lights can be moved, but they cannot be rotated because they're emitting. The light is being emitted from a sphere. A spotlight acts in the exact same way as a car headlamp. So these can be moved and rotated. And then an area light we're not going to worry too much about. Um, it's not really used for lighting up scenes at all. Um, so for the time being, we're going to choose a point light. And notice now that we have this light in the scene. Let's just zoom out and see what's happening. This sphere is the influence of the light, so how far the light can emit. The, the closer it is to the center, the brighter it is. As it goes away from the, the, the sphere towards this, it then starts to kind of blur out, fade out, okay? So we're just going to move this around, and you'll see how it's working. The closer we move the light to the object, the, the kind of brighter, shinier it gets to simulate light properties. We move it around other objects, it lights other objects around. And notice that we cannot rotate this object at all. So that's what we put on lights. To modify a light, we can go over to the inspector panel. We can change the range of this, and for any one of these modifiers, you can click and drag on some properties such as range to increase it. Intensity is how bright the light actually is. I tend to go no more over a value of 1. Um, and we don't need to worry about any of the other settings. Unfortunately in the free version of Unity uh, there's no shadows for point lights. Now one thing I forgot to mention Oh, sorry, uh, we also have light color, which is the color of the light, which I do recommend you do for all types of lights. Even if it's usually strong lights, strong colors like this, don't work too well. However, 
nice dim faded versions of a color do work. One thing I did forget to mention was in the inspector, the very top, you have the name of your object, which is extremely important. So I'm going to call this light bulb. Um, it's very important to name all your objects. I'm going to click on my cube and I'm going to call this box. I'm going to click on my floor, which is called plane. I'm going to call it floor. So that's on up here in the inspector. It's the first thing you see. And notice up in your hierarchy view, these are now renamed appropriately so that you can you know what's happening in your scene and you can manage it appropriately. So we have our floor, box, light bulb, and we have our main camera. Notice that if we click our main camera, we get what's called the camera preview, which is just a preview of how your, your camera is going to look when the game plays. And if I right enough play my game, this is it playing. Okay. Uh, so I'm just going to turn off play. Um, so let's actually try moving the camera around. I'm going to move this up a bit and across. We're just going to move our camera into a more appropriate game view. So if this was a dual stick shooter, it would be kind of above the box or player. And then we use the rotate button. We're just going to move that down slightly at an angle and we can keep moving it until we get a position that we actually like. And then when we hit play, it's now in a better position. You can then fine tune this to make sure that it is in the center, so on and so forth. Okay. Um, another way of adjusting your camera is in your scene view. If you get a view that you like, so say you're looking at the top of this box and you think, okay, gosh, that's a that's a fantastic view right there. In your hierarchy view, click your main camera once and it'll give you the camera preview. Then go to uh, assets, sorry, game object, and click the button uh, align with view. And what this will do is it will align this object to your camera. Sorry, it's game objects, align view to selected. Let me just double check on that one, sorry. Just got to be 100% sure. I think it's changed a wee bit. Sorry, it's aligned with view, my bad. So get a game view that you like, such as this. You click your camera, you go to game assets, and um, oh, I keep forgetting, align with view. And that will basically take the view that you were in and align it with the selected object, such as the main camera. So it's a very quick way of aligning your view. Okay, folks. Um, so that's a wee bit. Let me just see how long we've been going on for. 12 minutes. So that's a wee bit on adding objects, renaming them, changing some properties using the inspector panel, as well as uh, the, the move, rotate, and scale tools. We've made some lights and we've adjusted our cameras. The last thing I want to do is just show you how to bring in a, uh, a directional light. Game object, create other and directional light. And you'll notice it's extremely bright. I'm just going to move that out of the way. Like I said earlier, directional lights don't actually change the direction of the light. Instead of this, the rotate button here will actually do that for you. So think of this as a sunlight. As we move it, it will go day and night time. And with the directional lights and the free version in Unity, you do get shadows. So under shadow type, we're going to go to soft shadows. And notice now that a shadow is being drawn. It's quite a bad looking shadow, but what we can press is under resolution, we're going to use very high resolution, which means that the quality gets a bit better. And now whenever we rotate it, you'll see that it's kind of acting like a sunlight and the shadow's moving appropriately. So this is kind of like a later time of the day, whenever the shadow is really long, the sun's at a, at a very low angle. It's kind of midday. You can kind of see that the sun's nearly on top of us like this. This would be like a midday setting very bright. You can also change the color of the daytime. So let's just go with a yellowy orange. You can choose the intensity. I tend to go with very low intensity. 0.3 is fine. I'm going to change this to sunlight. I'm going to call that a name just so that I know in my hierarchy view. Um, bias will do some things and um, that one doesn't do too much. 
uh, the softness of the shadow the the fade of the shadow again not too much but the the opacity which is hiding somewhere uh, da, 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 da. strength sorry that's the little that's the strength of the shadow so no shadows are really 100 percent black either is this it's quite gray but you can change how, uh, the, the strength of the shadow like so gives for a more realistic effect so that's it uh, as a quick introduction to um, our uh, use of Unity, okay? So I shall see you in the next video.